Hello friends, in this tutorial we are going to learn some basic git commands. Uh, so if you have already taken my git tutorial on what is version control system and what is github, you should already be familiar with some of the basic concept of version control system. In this tutorial we are going to create a new github repository and we are going to add some code uh, while learning uh, the basic uh, git commands. So to create a github repository first of all you need to go to github.com and you need to create an account. I already have an account so I'm lo already logged in as a learn p a user into github.com so I already have one repository called py I'm going to create a new repository I'm just going to call it test test repository and by default with a free account uh, your repository need to be a public if you want to make a private repo so that no one else can see it then that uh, option comes under a paid account so I'm just going to make a public repository which anyone can see I'm also going to initialize it with a readme file typically when you write any code you always have readme file explaining what that code is about so I'm just going to add that when I click on create repository button it is creating uh, an empty repository me uh, repository uh, with a readme.md file so if you open this file it just uh, taste repo if you want to edit it you can edit it and say taste repo for git commands demonstration and if you commit it will commit it okay now github.com is a cloud storage it is a remote server so i already created a new repository how do i sync that up to my local computer for this you need to have a git bash installed so if you type in git bash here if you click on it you will get this now uh, I already have a tutorial on how to install git so when you install basically a git you get this git bash installed so you can open it up uh, now I am in C code directory here what I'm going to do is uh, just clone this repository cloning the repository me means copying repository from github to your local computer so for cloning you go here clone and just copy this link so if you click here it's gonna copy this link and then the first command that we are going to type is git clone and then you will copy paste the repository URL when you do that it is just cloning it on your local computer so when I do now ls I will see that now I have this test directory here so I will go into test directory let me just clear this out and when I do ls I got a readme file so that's the only file we have okay now the command that you will use often with git is git status when you do git status it is showing that you don't have any changes in your repository it's totally empty and clean okay now we are going to add our uh, first python file so let's open py charm editor here and here i have a c code test directory open so i'm adding a new python file and we are going to make a program called hungry so here in this program you are basically asking if you are hungry or not and you get some responses so it's a, just a simple fun program so the first line I will write here is I am hungry okay and usually when you write code you create a new file you write code you execute it you make sure it works okay yes it is working okay it is printing whatever it is supposed to print and then you add your file to your version control system so now I have my code ready uh, let me go back to git bash here and here I'm going to say uh, 
get status when i do git status i get these two files dot idea dot hungry dot idea is a f directory that is created by py charm so you can just ignore it uh, but here it says that git add file name to include what will be committed so in git whenever you are adding a new file you need to add it to something called a staging area staging area is the area uh, which contains the files that you are ready to commit commit means ready to push to uh, your version control system okay so i will say my second command is git add hungry.py so when you run this command what happens is now if I, if you run git status this file now shows as green which means it is in my staging area now whenever i, I run the next command called git commit so git commit is now taking the files from staging area which means these files it will not take these file this directory and it will just commit it locally okay so now git commit command takes minus m as an option and m means uh, message so i'm just saying first version of hungry code okay so when you say git commit now you have committed your change into uh, your local version control system remember when you run git commit com command uh, you are not still pushing it to github which is your remote cloud the code still resides on your local computer so git status okay so okay so it is in in local version control database it is not still on a remote serv server so if you run now the next command that you want to learn is git log git log will show you the log of all your commit history so when you say git log you'll see first version of hungry code and this is the commit id uh, and these are the two initial commits okay now let me clear the console so when i run git status here now i don't have anything in my staging area whatever changes i made they are committed okay so the first just to revise the points uh the first thing was git add that adds files to staging area next thing is git commit that commits your code to local version control database okay now the third command is now i'm ready to push my code to github so you just run git push uh, so git push will now push my code to my uh, github so let me check what happened on github so this is my github repo i only see readme.md file now let me just refresh it so once i refresh it aha here i see the new file hungry.py so if you open it see whatever code i wrote now it is on the cloud so that now if i log in from some other machine or some remote place i can still get this code back i don't have to rely on my local computer to access this code all right uh, so now here in the if you click on this uh, it will show you the commit log so our history is we basically created the empty repository then we added readme.md file and then we added our first of python file hungry.py okay so uh now what i'm going to do is i'm going to make some more changes into my python file okay so i will say uh my hungry flag is are you hungry so my program is now asking a question if you are hungry or not and if you are hungry i will say uh, eat samosa samosa is a very delicious indian food uh, it's fried it's not healthy but you can't resist to eat that because of its taste uh, now if you already ate samosa if you're not hungry then do your homework okay uh, now I'm going to run this program just to make sure it works okay okay when you say yes it is saying eat samosa 
when you say no it is saying do your homework all right my code is now ready uh, so the next thing you do is you already have a file so again you will be running git status command a lot so I'm seeing again hungry.py is modified so I need to add it to my staging area okay and when I do git status it says it is in the staging area green means it is in the staging area now i will run git diff tool so git diff tool is a command that allows you to see the difference between whatever code you have previously versus whatever code you have right now okay so you have to say git diff tool head we'll go over a concept of head later on but just for the simplicity you just run this command and it allows you to see the difference between your previous version of the file and the current version. So when I do this, uh, it's gonna open this diff. So here, previously I had, this is my previous file, this is my new file. So previously I had just one print statement and now I have uh, this whole code, okay? So you just see the difference, you make sure things looks okay and then what you do is you again do git push. Oh, sorry, we missed git commit actually. So we'll say git commit uh, added hungry prompt. So you write a meaningful message uh, to mention what that change is about, okay? So once you commit it, you are ready to push. And when you push it, it will go again upstream so again let me refresh so i click on refresh button now instead of three commits i have four commits if i click here it will show my latest commit you know it says committed 20 seconds ago okay now if on the github or website if i want to see the difference you just click on this commit id and when you do that, it will show you the difference. See, red means you removed this line, green means you added this line. Okay, so that was a quick demonstration of our three basic commands, git add, git commit, git push. Now, let me show you in a pic picture how that actually worked. So if you look at this picture here, what happened is uh, locally on my computer, I had this working copy, uh, which is my local code. And whenever I do git add, it moves that code into a thing called a staging area. Staging area means whenever you do git commit, whatever is in staging area will be committed. And whatever is not in the staging area will not be committed. So if you recall, we had a directory called dot idea i never added that using git add command that's why it never got pushed to github okay so remember you have to always do git add so when you do git add you are adding into a staging area next step is once you are sure you are ready to commit you issue git commit command when you do that it pushes those changes into a version database. Now this version database is present on local computer. Uh, this whole box is your local computer. So uh, you are still not pushing it to remote, okay? So that's the benefit of using Git. It is a distributed version control system, which means it allows you to track changes locally on your computer as well as on remote, okay? So once you have once you do git commit, it will create version one. Then you will again make changes, do git add, git commit, it will create another version, version two. Again, make changes, do git add, git commit, version three. So you will just keep on accumulating your changes in your local version database, okay? And whenever you are ready to push the changes to remote GitHub repository, you will issue git push command and once you do that uh, you have your code in the remote now once it is in the cloud you can you don't need to rely on your local computer you can 
access that code from any area of the world as long as you have internet connection okay so the basic difference between git and other other version control systems such as svn is that svn doesn't have this particular box in svn all you do is you make your changes and directly push to remote versus having this allows you to track your changes locally you know it's very powerful actually and that's the reason why git is very popular nowadays all right so that was all about uh, these three basic commands now the reason why I'm using command prompt is that command prompt allows you a uh, greater flexibility there are many tools or many uh, IDEs available from where you can push uh, git command git code you can basically push code to git and do whatever things we did here you can do the similar things from that uh, graphical user interface but I personally like a command line interface because it is very very powerful very very flex flexible as well okay so in the beginning you may feel like you have to type a lot of command but it's not that hard so just uh, stay patient and it should just work out okay so always use command prompt I highly recommend it okay so that was all about uh, Git's uh, basic commands. Uh, we'll learn a few more commands in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.